Yes, ladies and gentlemen, I would like to talk about osteoporosis as one of the major complications you can have in the aging population. Osteoporotic fractures are there all the time, and you have about one third of the women over the age of 65 affected by the disease. Also, I don't know whether you know that about the risk of dying after a hip fracture is about as high as dying from breast cancer. Okay. So the way we diagnose osteoporosis today is basically a mass prediction. So we look at the bone mass in that sense, and we have to move away from that. We have to use innovative imaging technology, and we have to use virtual physiological approaches to basically model that behavior. Imaging in that sense is important that you go from the organ level down to the tissue level and look at the bone in three dimensions, even going further down to see microfractures on that side or look at the little capillaries in bone or even the cells with submicron resolution. So this is an example here of what it would look like in a young normal in terms of the three-dimensional bone structure. And here you can see an osteoporotic person. You can already see the differences that happen actually between the two, quite dramatic, but it's a static image. So one thing that we thought we should do is to look at functional imaging approaches that really show you how bone fails. And this is such an example. So here you have a very good bone stock, and you can see the local failure here that is just very local in this area. Whereas in the osteoporotic case, you can see that the bone is failing everywhere. It is catastrophic for you. So this is one of the problems. And if I look at two other examples, actually, then you'll see that one thing that happens with aging is that you're losing preferentially some structures uh, in the horizontal direction. This is from the spine of the human. And exactly in these areas where you're missing elements, uh, you're actually going to fail. You can see that also in the other side in the upper part. Um, you can also see the bone is actually quite plastic in its behavior, not so brittle as one thinks, and especially in the spine. We can then l basically use these structures and they look at each individual element. So this is some image processing that we use. And you can see there's some plates and rods and things like that. And how do they contribute to the mechanical strength of the system? So we can model this better, understand better what drugs may be able to do. And one thing that you see here is that small, tiny rods more likely to buckle, to fail. Um, so this is very important from a mechanical point of view. But what's also important is with aging, you start to get these kind of holes in the bone, and they're very devastating in the fact that the mechanics there is very weak and they actually crumble right there. If you look in more highly resolution in synchrotron radiation sources, a few micron resolution, so a hundredth of a diameter of a hair in that sense, right? So you can see that the cracking here is going on from this hole. So the cracks really emanate from this hole, the, the stress raisers, and actually that's quite important in that sense to know this because you need to model this later on in your simulation. So we really do this kind of dynamic image processing here with sub-micron resolution, 300 nanometer isotropic resolution. And you can see the crack is coming here. It's a few micron thick coming from these blood vessels. The rest around it actually is bone cells. So you can see they're also looking at very tiny lacuna in the bone cells. You can look at that in 3D. So you can see the abundance of bone cells. Of course, image processing allows us to take away the bone cells. And you can now see in green the cracks that are emanating from these vascular structures in bone. And that's very quite important because with age, you get more and more vascularization of the bone, actually, and poor structures. And so we get more cracks there. So one thing that we want to do is to not only look at the functional imaging, but also look where are the stresses and strains, actually. And you can see that we can do that with so-called finite element analysis or virtual biomechanics. And we can very well predict the behavior of these structures, as we have seen before from our analysis. So we can go now and take this into humans, where, of course, we cannot do mechanical testing. And we can measure the differences, for example, for a two elderly male. And you can see beautifully how you can look inside this bone. This is now really happening in the living person. And you can actually predict using high performance computing with millions of degrees of freedom uh, the mechanical behavior. This is a system that can be used for measuring at the forearm in the patient this nice structure and do mechanical strength calculation. And the um, very important with that is, is actually that uh, you can really see where failure should happen. And then maybe we have better tools, uh, for example, for these four patients where 
the ones on top did not fracture, the ones on the bottom did fracture. Their bone mass is exactly the same, but the distribution of the mass is very different. And you can see actually that in these that fractures, you can see much more loading in this area. The cortex is much more thinner, but it has a larger diameter. So that's not so good for them. And we hope we can use this later on, actually to make better predictions in the future for our patients. Thank you very much. Peace.